But first, though, um, this is a big old story. Yeah. It filled the papers all weekend. It's continuing to dominate the news after Spice Girl Jerry Halliwell was seen putting on a united front with her husband, Christian Horner, at Saturday's Bahrain Grand Prix. Yeah, the Red Bull chief was cleared of misconduct last week following an eternal investigation into alleged coercive and controlling behaviour towards a female colleague. But the public interest only escalated after texts and WhatsApp messages allegedly between the pair were leaked to the media 24 hours later and just went whoosh, yeah. around the world, didn't they? Well, it started a national conversation about when innocent flirting could become grounds for a split and when does a flirty text then become a dirty text? Now, we're joined now by Deirdre and Vanessa for their take. Uh, good morning Hi. to you, good ladies. Morning. morning. Hello. Hello, it's so lovely to see Deirdre and work yeah. with her. I love it. Well, I just want to start this by saying, um, you know, our support goes to Jerry Halliwell because imagine oh. you found those texts and then it is played out to the world. So, I'm, yeah, my heart does go out to her. And she, she was actually in the air, wasn't she, when they were, when they were all leaked? Aww. I mean, what an awkward situation to then have to get off an aeroplane, greet your husband. So difficult, yeah, I agree. I really feel, whatever's gone on behind the scenes, I really feel for and her. So he's the father of her, of her son, yeah. the stepfather of yeah. her daughter. They're a family, they're a, they're, a, they're a unit. And obviously she doesn't want to break up that unit. I completely sympathise and empathise with and her. And you can't reverse what's happened. Once they're out there, they're out there and the embarrassment for the family is huge, yes. isn't it, Vanessa? It's overwhelming, really. And, and there's a profusion of messages. It's not a one-off. It's not, uh, uh, you know, a greeting the morning after the night before. It's, it's a kind of deluge, an avalanche of messages. Mm. And it's, it's obviously going to be very, very tough for her to take. Very tough, because I, I bet she'll be thinking, gosh, when you were sending that, where was I? Was that when I was in the bedroom blow-drying my hair and you were in the bathroom sending another woman these messages? Oh, my gosh, what were you saying to me? What did I think was going on in my marriage? What was really going on in my marriage? That's, um, that's a horrible question to have to ask yourself, isn't he, it? He, really he hasn't really spoken tough. officially about these messages. No, no one has, so they're all allegations at the moment. As a nation Googles messages on WhatsApp over mm. the weekend, you'll all be looking at them, I'm sure. Mm. They're right there. We're going to leave that there, though, because it's basically sparked a conversation that, that we want to continue, Deirdre, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because I think lots of people have been in this, had this experience, haven't they, that they find, you know, they suddenly get a bit of a feeling about their partner. Maybe they check their phone, they find out they are sending some inappropriate messages. And, I mean, to be honest, I would even think... I wouldn't even want to find flirty messages, you know? I mean, it, it's not just a question of flirting's OK with if you're unattached and they're unattached, but flirting's not OK if you're in a relationship. So it's all very tricky. That can be very uncomfortable. And also, I think when people send messages, I've certainly heard from people quite regularly, you know, they know they're doing wrong by sending messages and they just... But, you know, they just... They get sort of sucked into it because sometimes our phone feels like our little private space, doesn't it? And it can trick you into thinking it is like a separate little world. Uh, you know, if... I mean, it's premeditated, their messages, but is it considered cheating if it is... A message. That's that's that. Well, is the I, I here. consider it cheating. I do. Yeah. That doesn't mean to say I would think you would just dump a relationship over it, though. Right. But I do consider it cheating because I mean it would be hurtful. I mean I think I had you know there's a bit of a this may sound sexist, but I must say I've never come across a woman who thinks that sending flirty or sexy texts isn't wrong. You know they they see it as cheating whether they're doing it themselves or whether their partner's doing it. Whereas I have to say, I have heard from some blokes, or certainly from the partners of blokes, who try and say, oh, well, it's only on my phone, it doesn't matter. I think, I think the, the real issue with it is this. If you're in what's meant to be an exclusive relationship, a marriage or a long-term, what's supposed to be monogamous relationship, and you are sending messages that you wouldn't want your partner to see, then that is opening that exclusive relationship up and including somebody else and making it a three in a relationship where one of the people is left out and that's your wife or your partner or maybe your husband if you're a woman who's doing it. And as soon as you're doing that, as soon as you're engaging in some kind of communication with someone, even if it isn't actually physical, you're not actually yeah. meeting, you're not actually having sex, A, it's a gateway to doing both those things. You know, you're not going to keep up the messaging forever without meeting and eventually copping off with each other. That's why you're doing it, presumably. But B, it's leaving out and excluding your actual key partner, the one you're meant to love, the one who's meant to trust you, the one you know you're meant to have this, this strong relationship with. And it's opening the whole thing up to 
absolutely being nuked or imploded, particularly if the other person decides to, you know, lift the lid on the whole as thing. As soon as there's secrecy involved, exactly. you know you're in trouble, That's don't right. you? That's right, yes. Could you just keep in things could secret? Could you sit by, by um, Deirdre if you find those... I would, well, I know. So, so, I mean, my husband cheated on me a couple of times. I did ask him, you know, he died 15 months ago. I asked him last night if it was OK to talk about this. Oh. But he... <laughs> And I checked with my daughters as well. That they <laughs> just made sure everyone's OK. But it's a, it was like, it was, we were like, we, we got together in our 20s. So this was like, he was, we were about our mid-20s at the time. We'd just come back from a year travelling around South America. We'd had this very exciting life. I was lucky we got back to this country. I walked straight into an exciting job. He didn't. He was floundering around a bit. Um, and then similarly was the thing about 10 years later... Um, when, again, we were dealing with, you know, having a, parenting a child together and both having busy jobs. He was on a press trip, which is notorious, you know, a travel trip. So, again, he did, and I found a letter from the other woman. So there was some screaming shouting went on. But both times I could see that was a sign that both of us had allowed stuff to drift in our marriage a bit. So it made you stronger? It made us stronger. But because the key ingredient is so that he did not dismiss my feelings and he was willing to work okay. on the relationship. We both really worked on it. We sort of had counselling, you know, and we really made big changes, mm -hmm. which then... And we went on to have another th sort of 35, 40 happy years. Okay. So it was worth it. So I don't think you've got to write, off it, write it off... But I do think cheating is very wrong, and also it's. And if the other partner says they're just yes, they're just going to shrug it off, that is a no go. And Vanessa, you yes. never know what's going on under someone's roof. You, Every relationship is different. Absolutely, I, I absolutely agree with you. You don't throw away a valuable relationship, and it's very, very hard indeed to end a relationship with somebody you love. I mean, if you're in love and you love them and you really feel that they are, you know, the person of your heart, whatever you find is very, very hard and to end a relationship. And if they love you. And if they, they love, love you. you. But, but, yeah. but I think the crucial thing, and Deirdre is always the person who hits on this, that's why she's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> is the bit about if you decide, OK, we'll carry on, we'll try. It's about how hard the other person is, is prepared to try and whether they really throw themselves into rebuilding. Your trust is the crucial thing. Are they behaving Absolutely. in a trustworthy way? What often happens, and I do speak from rather bitter experience here, is they get bored with it. They get bored being sorry. They get bored being, you know, the person who has to say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it, and let me... And they and very quickly lose patience with the whole kind of rebuilding thing. It's kind of like, I'm back in, that's it, mm -hmm. feet under the table, you know, end Trying off, don't want to hear it about it again, carpet, don't mention yeah. it, let's carry on. And that, that, I think, is the key. You know that they're not really sincerely mm -hmm. attempting to win your trust back and then maybe that's the time to consider pulling the...